Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Well, morning Pacific time. Hey, everybody. Welcome to today's Open Notes Grand Rounds webinar with Dr. Christian Sinclair. My name is Liz Salmi, and I'm the Senior Strategist of Research Dissemination for Open Notes. And I'll be introducing you to the cast of characters along the way. Open Notes is based at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center in Boston, Massachusetts. As researchers, we've been studying the effects of shared clinical notes on patients, their care partners, caregivers, and the effects on clinicians for over 10 years. Open Notes, we work with collaborators around the country and overseas to foster and evaluate the spread and effectiveness of shared clinical notes. And when clinician notes are shared with patients, we call them Open Notes. We are funded entirely by federal and philanthropic grants and gifts, and we do not create any software or technology. Open Notes is a philosophy, a movement. So we are really excited for today's presentation on sharing palliative care notes with Dr. Christian Sinclair. But first, I'm going to hand things over to Dr. Kate DeRoche, who's going to talk for a few minutes to set the stage for Dr. Sinclair by sharing a bit about a new federal rule kicking in in just a few days that will mandate the sharing of clinical notes with patients. And Kate is also going to attempt to cover about a decade's worth of research around open notes in about five slides. So good luck to her. Dr. Kate DeRoche is the director of open notes at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center and an associate professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School. Kate, take it away. Thank you. So, and thanks to everyone who signed on to join us today. We are very excited about this, um, about this webinar around palliative care notes. So I'm gonna just very quickly go through my portion just to give everyone a little bit more background information. Patients have had, a right, have had the right to see their notes since 1996 when HIPAA was passed. You know, it's a really complicated piece of legislation, but the easiest piece of it to understand is that it gave patients the right to request and access their medical records. But it was not, it's not easy for patients to get their records that way. I mean, you have to pay for them, you have to sign a lot of forms, you have to you know, trundle down to the sub-basement of your local hospital to try to get your records. So it's not easy. Uh, the second piece of legislation that gets us to where we are now is the High Tech Act. So that act incentivized hospitals and clinicians to adopt electronic health records and one of the things that they had to do in order to get these incentives was have a patient portal where patients could log in and do some very basic things. So that set the, the sort of tech that set us up with the technology. And then the third piece of legislation was the 21st Century Cures Act that was passed under the Obama administration. It was the last major piece of legislation passed under the Obama administration. And that was primarily about biomedical research and innovation, but there was a piece of it that said, that essentially directed the Department of Health and Human Services to improve data interoperability. So how data flows between providers, between organizations. And then there was one line in it that I'm going to paraphrase that says that patients should have electronic access to all of the information in their electronic medical records. So fast forward, four years later, many uh, discussions about what all means, and we have the interoperability and information blocking rule. This rule um, takes effect next week, November 2nd, and it requires a greatly expanded set of information to be electronically shared with patients without charge, and it includes progress notes. This is a, this is, um, sort of a, a graphic of everything that has to be exchanged between providers and made available to patients. And I'll just draw your attention to the clinical notes piece. There are eight kinds of notes that need to be shared, and they include progress notes, consultation notes, discharge summaries, uh, history and physical, and reports, so labs, imaging reports, pathology reports. So just to take a step back for a minute, why is this important for patients? So what I'm showing you here is what a patient typically sees in a portal, and we've found over the years that many providers don't actually know what the patient portal interface looks like. And so you can see on the left side of the screen, this is a typical after-visit summary 
for Liz, who has agreed to share this with us. And it includes very basic information about her vitals, what she was there for. Yep, she's still, you know, still the same height. And in the middle is what she can see typically on her phone. On the right is the note from the same visit. So you can see that the note is just has a is a much sort of richer source of information. So that's why, so just here's that's the policy. That's why it's important for patients and a brief bit of history for people who didn't hear Liz say this early on, open notes is not a software. We're not a vendor. We don't, we're not creating an app. We don't have a server full of notes. We are a philanthropically funded research initiative that focuses on what happens when patients are given access to their notes. So it started as a pilot in 2010 at three organizations in Boston, Seattle, and, and rural Pennsylvania. There were 105 primary care clinicians, and there were about 20,000 patients. And as part of the evaluation, patients and clinicians were surveyed before and after the pilot. Patients reported uh, substantial benefits around feeling in better control, understanding their medications, and clinicians, while well, very worried before the intervention started, kind of said, ah, oh, this was okay. This, this, in fact, one, we had one report of a clinician saying, are, are you sure that this is turned on? Because I'm not really hearing anything from my patients. So we recently went back and resurveyed at those three sites. In the, in the intervening period between the pilot and now, all three of those sites opened all of their ambulatory care notes. So across every ambulatory care setting, patients were able to read their notes. We went back and surveyed them seven years later and found patients were still saying, these notes are really important for taking care of my health, remembering my care plan. Patients were saying they understood all or nearly all of what's in their notes that reading their notes helps them understand their medications. About one in five found an error in their notes that they thought was important. And significantly, we found that patients who have um, lower levels of formal education and limited English proficiency or limited English proficiency were more likely than other patients to report these benefits. And for clinicians, we were worried because uh, we weren't sure that the clinician findings would hold when we moved out of just primary care, but we found that the majority of clinicians after sharing notes said that it's a good idea for patients, it's helpful for engaging them, most would recommend the practice to colleagues, very few report questions or concerns, about a third say they're spending at least somewhat more time in documentation, we don't really know what that means, although we have seen some other smaller studies that show that the actual amount of time is minimal, like a, a few seconds. But it could feel like it takes more time, particularly as clinicians are getting used to the practice and they're thinking, well, maybe I need to change a little bit about what I'm doing in order to, because now I know patients are reading. So in the, over the period from 2010 when the pilot started to just Right now, before the, um, before the rule goes into effect, we know of over 250 healthcare organizations that are sharing notes with about 53 million people in North America. So these are, um, just to be clear, this is 53 million people who are signed up on a portal at an organization that shares notes through that portal. So tremendous amount of spread over the last, over the last 10 years. And we expect, um, you know, of course, now everyone's going to have to do it. So we'll, we're, we're very excited about that. So that's it for me. I want to get to the main event. Um, if you have questions for me, there's my contact information. Feel free to, um, feel free to shoot them my way.